Greetings, energetic viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Today on our show, we are honored to introduce the esteemed T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., a pioneer in nutritional research. A professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States, Dr. Campbell has spent over 40 years researching, teaching, and developing diets to optimize nutrition and health. Dr. Campbell received his master's degree and PhD from Cornell and served as a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He has served on several grant review panels of multiple funding agencies, lectured extensively, and has authored more than 300 research papers. His original research, both in the laboratory and with large human populations, has brought him recognition with awards for both research and citizenship. Dr. Campbell is also the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study, considered the most comprehensive analysis of the role of diet, disease, and health ever conducted. In 2004, Dr. Campbell and his son Tom co-authored the book, The China Study, which summarizes his career's worth of research in nutrition and concludes that a pure vegan diet is optimal for human health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policies. Today's show is the second in a three-part series on healthy living featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his research on the benefits of a plant-based diet. Do we really need a lot of protein in our diet? And does a vegetarian diet provide all the vital nutrients that our bodies require? What we're now saying at least what my research is showing, is that excessive amounts of protein, if we start consuming protein in excess of what we need, cholesterol levels in our blood starts to rise. Atherogenic uh, lesions that lead to heart disease starts to increase. We get an acidity that then pulls calcium to the bones. We, we, get, we start growing cancers. And so the question is we can't consume excess protein. The question then becomes what's excess? Well, the amount of protein we need is about 8 to 10 percent of total calories. Most of us, 95 percent of us in our society, consume somewhere in considerably in excess of that. We consume between about 11 and 25 percent or so. And so we put ourselves at risk by doing that. And uh, plant-based foods, a good plant-based diet, vegetables, fruits, grains, has just about 8 to 10 percent protein. It's, it's, I mean, nature almost made it so that it was ideal. A key finding in both the China Project and Dr. Campbell's research is that excess animal protein is a potent trigger for cancer growth and other diseases. In addition, in the case of breast cancer, he recognizes the role of excess estrogen, which also arises from animal proteins and milk in particular. Well, what are the factors that lead to breast cancer, and how can a plant-based diet reduce those risks? Breast cancer is, uh, like other cancers and other diseases, very complex from a biological perspective. And unfortunately, over the years, we've studied that uh, various factors that might be related in isolation. So we've learned some things. You know, and, and, but uh, it's quite controversial and debatable if people focus on these individual studies and individual entities. When, however, you put all this together in a more holistic kind of interpretation and look at things collectively, it becomes quite clear to me the breast cancer is a disease of the West. Uh, that's been noted by many people. Breast cancer begins to emerge as we start consuming more animal-based foods, especially dairy. Dairy food uh, has cert certain characteristics with it that uh, when especially young people, in this case uh, young girls, are consuming dairy, for example, to hopefully to get stronger bones and teeth and grow faster, as the ads have indicated, they actually then reach age at menarche or reproductive lives earlier. Boys, I'm sure, do the same thing, but we know we have better data for girls. So they reach age at menarche earlier, their circulating estrogen levels are higher, they remain, remain high as long as they consume that kind of diet, they stop the reproductive life later, they have a longer period, more estrogen exposure, all in large measure related to the kind of diet they're consuming. So I would argue that now, uh, as far as food is concerned, uh, animal food is a problem, especially dairy food. I, I think we should just simply not be feeding dairy food to our young people and all older people either. Plant food also has a 
protective effect. We know the dietary fiber and certain other phytochemicals and things like this in plant foods, we know that they also tend to repress, you know, the growth of cancer or cells that would behave like breast cancer cells. So it means being a total vegan, essentially, you know, to really uh, get to the lowest possible risk for breast cancer. Dr. Campbell explains that the main reason modern physicians and society at large are unaware of the profound benefits of a plant-based diet is the tendency to study aspects of health in isolation. Science itself in medicine is focused on reducing things down to its, to its details and then attempting to take these details of individual chemicals or individual nutrients or individual diseases or individual... I mean, they, they really focus, focus, focus. And that, to me, is not really what medicine should be. That's not health. Health, and particularly nutrition, is um, a condition that is very holistic, comprehensive effects. I, I'm a biochemist by training. And if you could sort of crawl inside the cell, which I feel like I, I can do from time to time, you start looking at all these reactions. And it's like a symphony. It's like a beautiful symphony. You know, countless things are coming together to actually create a kind of dynamic, a highly integrated dynamic that leads to health if we give it the right resources. If we give it the wrong resources, we don't, we don't get that. It's, it's, uh, it's really quite a beautiful story. When Healthy Living returns, we will learn about how when the body is given good plant-based nutrition, it not only begins to recover, but good nutrition can prevent our genes from expressing negative genetic tendencies such as disease. Be sure to stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television, featuring renowned author of The China Study, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Through extensive research, he has found that when the body is given the proper nutrients from a plant-based diet, it begins to naturally heal itself. He emphasizes the holistic approach in maintaining overall well-being. we got countless chemicals coming in from food and being synthesized and so forth that are playing a role in that system. I mean, it's beyond our comprehension. There's so many reactions, so many enzymes, so many this, so many. And what it turns out to be is that there's a synergy within that system. The body is able to control mm -hmm. that massively complex system. Mm -hmm. The body in its infinite wisdom can control that system if we give it the right resources. Right. And so that's almost the antithesis of science as we practice it's the antithesis of medicine. Right. Because they're always talking about, you know, one drug, one, one, so forth and so on. Uh -huh. But it's the symphony, it's the harmony that exists in the cells that really started to impress me. And when you think of it that way, okay, then you go outside of the cell. You know, you look at the whole organ, for example, or you look at a whole group of organs, you look at the whole body. And what you find is that with our hormonal system, especially with sends messages around and the neural system which sends messages around what you find is that the whole body is marvelously uh, symphonic it's harmony right. and that's really what it's all about and and our body can actually manage health and create health and even restore health in people who, who have disease it can do this all we need to do is I think Stop focusing so much on the details. Think about the whole, mm -hmm. and then make sure that we consume the right kind of food. And the body creates health on its own. Right, right. There's certain observations that I find really quite fascinating biologically. For one thing, advanced disease, mm -hmm. like heart disease, cancer, and so forth, it takes a long time to develop, but it's reversible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then the question comes up, you know, maybe it's reversible already after it's been diagnosed. And I believe it's true. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing. The second observation I, I would suggest is that the plant-based diet, which prevents it from going forward in early stages, mm -hmm. is the same kind of diet that prevents it becoming more serious in the late stages. Oh. So all of a sudden, 
this plant-based diet idea has more has more to do than just trying to prevent cancer or prevent heart disease. Now we know it can be used to restore health. It can be used to treat treat people with disease. That's very exciting. So it's a very different view than what we now have in medicine. Right. Right. You know. So uh, you know that's one thing. Another conclusion Dr. Campbell has reached is that by eating a healthy, nutrient-dense, plant-based diet, we can actually overcome or avoid our genetic tendencies. This concept is supported by the joint work of medical clinician Dean Ornish, MD, and visionary scientist and genome expert J. Craig Venter, PhD, who found that gene expression can be altered through lifestyle changes, including a diet very high in plant-based foods. Another observation that we worked on for a long time was that disease does not occur uh, just because of the genes we have. Right, you know, that's, genetic that's background. the reaction that I usually get from people. Like, oh, you know, my mom has breast cancer, I'm probably going to get it. Or, that's not, uh, like that. I mean, genes do play some role. It, it, here's the way it is. All these biological reactions whether they're normal physiological or whether they're pathological, all these reactions begin, biochemically speaking, they begin with genes. Mm -hmm. right. But eat there, and we have, you know, about 25,000 genes in all kinds of combinations. It's an enormously complex system. Right, right. And, and, they, and these genes all work together. So everything starts with genes. And in a biochemical sense, these genes, DNA in this case, uh, if you will, they produce uh, what we call RNA, the RNA then produces protein, mm -hmm. and the protein becomes the enzymes. Right. So, and then the enzymes is what's creating and controlling, you know, the events that subsequently turn into either health or disease. Mm -hmm. So we start with genes. Everything starts with genes. And, uh, but, and also we have some genes, all of us have some genes that aren't so good. Right. And they'll take they us down the wrong path. The, the question is, do, does our disease occur because of the genetic background, mm. very little or none. Because even if we have some troublesome genes, either from our background or from genes that have been corrupted during our lifetimes, if we have these kind of genes that can give rise to some disease, we can control the expression of these genes. That means we can control whether or not they do produce RNA, mm. whether they do produce protein, or whether they do produce uh, enzymes. Well, of course. So you know, even though the thing starts with genes, and that's a popular understanding, that's not what determines disease. What determines disease is the control of that genetic expression to give mm -hmm. you know, health or disease at the other end. Right. That's a very exciting concept because that, what that means is instead of, I mean, if we rely on the idea that genetics causes disease, that's a very fatalistic idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we rely in, instead on the idea that we control the expression of these diseases through nutrition, mm -hmm. that's where nutrition comes into play. Mm -hmm. If we can do it through nutrition, that's a very hopeful sign. Right, right. We can do it for ourselves. And now we know what kind of nutrition it is. Right. So uh, I, I've gotten very excited about you know, a very different worldview. Next Monday on Healthy Living, we will conclude our three-part interview with Dr. T. Colin Campbell. So be sure to tune in to Supreme Master Television. It was a pleasure to have you with us for today's show. And now please keep your dial tuned here for Science and Spirituality, up next right after Noteworthy News. May your days be filled with peace, nobility, and contentment.